back at it again. Welcome back to Headlight Headlines, your daily automotive news podcast. Today, we have some really good news, especially about the Tesla Cybertruck, if you're interested in that. And we'll get to it here in just a moment. But before that, be sure to check us out on Twitter at HLIHLines. You can always find a video version of this podcast on YouTube at Headlight Headlines. And also check us out on Instagram and TikTok. So like I said before, very big news on the Tesla Cybertruck here for us today. It is Thursday, January the 26th, 2023, and this information is actually from a meeting um, from yesterday. It was the fourth quarter of 2022 report for Tesla. We talked a little bit about something that he discussed yesterday, but that was very early in the news cycle yesterday and this much wasn't out yet so as you can see in the headline here tesla cybertruck now coming summer 2023 volume production in 2024 the claim that it's coming in summer 2023 i don't know how backed that is um because he says that it will begin production later this year and they're going to have additional details about our next generation vehicle platform on March 1st, which I understand that production like this is very difficult, takes a long time to get going, but it's been almost five years. It will be if the, if the Cybertruck does not come out until 2024, then it will be five years since it was unveiled in 2019. Which is ridiculous. Um, and if they're already going to unveil another vehicle platform this year, hopefully we'll see it in less than five years, to be honest. Because Ford has the Lightning, Rivian has the R1T, even the R1S, Chevy has, or General Motors has the, the Hummer, the Silverado, and the Sierra EVs. So there's a lot of competition out there now that there wasn't in 2019. It would have been the first of the first back then, but it won't. Obviously, we all remember this picture here when he smashed the windows that he said wouldn't break. That was funny. They said he wore a shirt during this meeting that had the smashed glass windows, which is kind of funny. So he's saying that Cybertruck won't be a significant contributor in 2023. So that means if they do start production, like he's claiming, it is going to be so limited, so small, that it's not going to have an impact on Tesla sales in 2023. Which is crazy, because if they could come out with full production, the Cybertruck would be their top selling vehicle, for sure. Um... Some other interesting things that he noted on is um, they started cutting prices, and we've talked about that a bit, but he says that demand has not fallen, or that demand has not fallen below the supply, and that demand is still above supply, that it's twice as high as supply, which I don't know if I believe because they've cut these prices like this, but I hope it's true, I just don't know. He then talked about some Twitter stuff, how he's popular, and we talked about yesterday how they were building the Nevada semi-truck plant, $3.6 billion. Um, and then he talks a lot about AI and self-driving technology, where he says that their full self-driving technology is the best that there is by far. He doesn't think any automaker right now will come even close to his AI self-driving tech and he thinks that the only people that can get close are some Chinese company um, because of their hard-working competitive culture he expects them to be second to Tesla even though Tesla is the biggest in China still just very interesting things for him to say to be honest interesting about the about the self-driving tech interesting about the 
sales and the demand. And then, I mean, I hope the Cybertruck comes out as soon as possible. Because it's just been forever now. And it's like, is it ever going to come out? I hope so. I hope so. I want to see one, but nothing too promising yet. Something that is actually confirmed to be coming this year. <laughs> we have the 2024 Honda Civic Hybrid. Um, it will be using the hybrid from the Accord Hybrid, and it will come out for the 2024 model year. We'll see which one comes out first, the Cybertruck or this Civic Hybrid. Um, it'll be offered in a sedan and a hatchback, and it is using the Accord Hybrid a version of the Accord Hybrid powertrain. So it may be a little more tuned, detuned, who knows. And it'll be sold alongside the gas models that are currently available. I love the new Civic. It is a beautiful car. It is very nice. Interior is very nice. Um, they had launched in Europe last year, a Civic Hybrid. And they thought that it would replace the Insight sedan. Which the Honda Insight is a very interesting car. I see one. There's one that I see down the street from here all the time. And the, it's an older one. It looks like none of these. But... I had forgotten about this car, and I saw it, and I was like, what is that car? Honda Insight. Let me see if I can find a picture of that one. Because the older ones, the older ones look kind of weird. Actually, it's not an Insight. It's something else. The older ones are weird, and they're goofy, but I like them. The newer ones just look like... A Civic and an Accord mixed together. Pretty much. I forget what that other weird hybrid Honda is called. Um, that I keep seeing. But. It's not that big of a deal for what we're talking about. It's just very odd. And I want to know what y'all think of it. Because I rarely see it. Alright. I will bring it back up tomorrow. When I go find it. Because I don't remember what it is called. And it's really bothering me now. But we're going to have to move on. Oh, here it is. This is the picture of it. I need to find what it's called. Boom. Clarity. Honda Clarity. Very interesting car. We're going off on a wild tangent here. Here we have it, the Honda Clarity plug-in hybrid. Very interesting car. I had never seen one before this one. Um, but it's a plug-in hybrid. Interesting car. You can see how it kind of covers the wheel arch there a little bit. Or it doesn't have a traditional wheel arch. That kind of remind. that's what reminds me of the Insight. So that is why we got off on this tangent. But anyway. They're not sure how the powertrain will be modified for this American Civic right now um, the hybrid Accord is 204 horsepower and the European version has 181 horsepower so I'm going to say somewhere in that same range it'll be pretty close um, I'm interested to see where they go and see if they ever want to make an electric Civic. I'm sure they will soon. Uh, but Honda ma mainly is doing hybrids right now. Besides that one SUV. Uh, the Prologue that they're working with General Motors. But you know who has no hybrid cars? Acura. Which is the luxury version of Honda. And they say that they are skipping over hybrids and moving from gas-powered cars to EVs directly. And they're also moving to 100% online sales. And we'll get to that in a second. But we know, we just talked about the Honda Prologue, which kind of looks like this, but it kind of doesn't, because this is the Acura ZDX, which is the Acura version of the Honda Prologue. Um, and they basically just said 
yeah, we know we have no hybrids, and we're not going to make any hybrids. So we're going to make electric with Honda. And it's like, okay. But they're not just making electric because they still have to make the Integra Type S, the TLX, all those cars. But they're moving towards the 100% electric as quickly as they can. Obviously, that can't happen overnight. And then they're shifting 100% to online sales. So it will not cut dealer franchises out. You can still go see it at Acura dealers, but you have to order them online instead of talk to the salesman there. Thought I was going to sneeze. Maybe I will. All right. Never mind. I did. I sneezed. Anyway, no sniz- no salesman talk. You just got ordered online. Very interesting. Because, you know, Tesla, Rivian, these new electric companies are doing just online sales, but they don't really have dealers as much, so it's not really the same. Um, but they are starting online sales with the ZDX, this electric car, and the ZDX Type S. Which, most people order cars online if they're getting a new car now already. Because they want to get their options and they want to do it their certain way, which is fine. There's nothing wrong with that. So, dealers have kind of obviously for used cars, there's always going to be dealers. So, and then they talk about Honda a little bit, which not that interesting to be honest. But you know what is interesting? This right here, Kia three-row SUV, possibly details leaked. By owner survey. I know that's a lot. I know I sounded dumb when I said that. But here is the Kia EV9. We've talked about it a little bit. It is wild. And they're saying it's going to be three rows possibly. Now. I'm not sure. What they're going to do. If they're going to have like a longer wheelbase version. If it's going to be like a. Tahoe Suburban type of deal where there's just a longer version that has a three row. I know the Tahoe has three row, but where this smaller wheelbase has just two and then there's a longer one with three, I don't know. But they say they want to get 300 miles of range, and this is their platform shared with Hyundai and Kia. And they know that the EV9 will have an optional three rows of seating. Which is wild. They're still testing this vehicle. But this box looking thing. It looks kind of cool. To be honest. It looks futuristic. And I know it's just a concept. But. They're saying. On this survey. So this. This survey that they're talking about here. Was leaked to Telluride owners. Which is their three row big SUV. Um. They're saying there might be two power configurations, 200 horsepower, 250 pound feet of torque, and 400 horsepower with 480 or 380 pound feet of torque. And they're saying the cheaper one would start at 56000 and then for more range and more power, it'll cost more. Who knows how much that'll be. It'll have a zero pound tow rating on the, on the base model, which is kind of weird. Um, but then they're saying the top range would be 73,000 and only 240 miles, which is like, whoa, that's a lot. Crazy wild futuristic interior. There's like no storage, no nothing. Just, just all that. This thing looks wild on the inside. Look at that steering wheel. Oh my gosh. They'll have additional fee for driver assistance technology, which yeah. But, like, I'm really wondering, how are they going to do three rows in this? Like, how? And either they're going to have a third row back here, have no cargo space, or have the reverse third row where they're facing the back, which came back. There's a Mercedes wagon that has that. Or maybe just maybe... They're going to borrow something from Ram here. 
we didn't really talk about this. Maybe we did a little bit. I don't really recall. I don't think we talked about it much. But here we have another look at Ram's third row of seating in their electric pickup, the Ram Revolution concept. And this is a 1500 truck with three rows of seating. And if you hear that first, you'll be like, what? The third row is this like jump seat style thing. Like think of extended cab pickups from the early 2000s. All had those. Yeah, like Uncle Eddie's rusted out S10. Um, but basically how they have it is, I wish they had a better picture of it here. Maybe they do. Is the first and second rows are on tracks. And you can scoot them up and down these tracks. You can kind of see it here. So you see on the floor these little track lines where the seat rides in. And you can scoot it up and down along this track. And that gives you room, if you scoot this up enough, to flop down the third row. And people can sit in it. See, here, here's the track right here, like I'm talking about. Very interesting design. You can see here's them folded up. And this seat's folded down, so you can see it. There's one folded down. They're both folded down. Maybe, I'm thinking maybe... That Kia EV9 could do something like that. It still wouldn't have a lot of space, though. There would not be a lot of storage space either way. So, who knows? But it is a cool-looking car, and they are still doing testing, so we'll find out soon. Next up, we got something really cool. I heard about this yesterday uh, in, like, the early afternoon, and this is a touchscreen. No, it's not. I lied. This is physical buttons for your Tesla touchscreen made by the aftermarket community. So this is an Indiegogo project. It is called the Control Bar. Um, and it adds physical buttons, as you can see, and knobs for your Tesla. So you can see here it adds a knob for temperature and for defrost there's a button and for dog mode there's a button. And it says much more. So you might be able to program these to do whatever. This is only available for the Model 3 and the Model Y, which kind of stinks, but maybe they'll make one for the Model S and Model X eventually. And it's really cool to see. It's powered by USB and attached, and they say it's discreet and hidden, which is really good. And they say it connects to Tesla EVs using a phone as a middleman, which means your phone has to be connected. And... It's so when you press the button and turn the, the knob, it sends a signal through your phone to actually change these, which is kind of cool. Um, it says it's $272 at current exchange rate, so not too bad for a feature like that. You can see here on Indiegogo, they've already almost doubled their goal. Yesterday, when I first saw this, it was at like 20000 It was still under the goal. And now it's almost double the goal, which is insane. This is from Normandy, and it's pretty cool looking. I like it a lot. Yeah, see, you can program these buttons. Seat heaters, defrost, dog mode, keep climbing on, home link, open garage, open trunk, front, charge port. Boom. So much. So, so much. Very cool. Very, very cool. And lastly... We have another Tesla story. Of course, we've had a lot today. This is our third Tesla story today. But this is our last story of the day. They have changed the Model Y starting price again. So, a few weeks ago we talked about Tesla. They dropped the Model Y price by $13,000. Insane. And then, the Model Y couldn't qualify for tax incentives. But, the new price, when it was cheaper, would qualify. But now they've changed the price again by $500 for no no reason. Which is crazy. So, the more expensive one is now considered an SUV and has a higher price limit. I don't know what I'm saying, to be honest. But they basically increased the price for no reason. And nobody knows. And everybody's freaking out. 
So who knows? We'll see what Elon says. But it might qualify for tax incentives is the good part. So that's good. Everybody have a great day today. That's all for today's episode. I will see you all in the next one. Like I said before, have a great day. Stay safe out there. And I'll see you.